Drink your water. Stay hydrated. It's good for you. All right, let's go. Welcome to another episode of Cybersecurity 101. I am Mark Hemingway. I'm the content producer here at Archer. And today we're going to learn about air gap. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to ask ChatGPT, what is an air gap? Question mark. An air gap is a physical or technical separation between computer systems or networks to prevent unauthorized data transfers or communication. Okay, so is, is it still online? It's just heavily protected or is it just another word for offline? Let me ask. Is air gap just another word for offline. Okay, it says no, they are related but not the same. An air gap involves physical or technical separation, while being offline simply means not connected to a network or the internet. An air gapped system is typically offline, okay, but not all offline systems are air gapped. But if they're offline, they wouldn't be accessible. All right, let's dive into this a little deeper. Can an air gap be compromised? Yes, in some cases, air gapped systems can be compromised through various methods, such as using malware introduced via physical media, exploiting human error, that's, that's my favorite, or utilizing covert communication techniques. Interesting. Can it be hacked? Because it sounds to me like that all kind of would be something you'd have to physically go into it with. And I want to know if it can come from an outside. Hacked from the outside. Let's try that. In most cases, an air gap system should not be directly hackable from the outside because it's physically or technically isolated from external networks. All right, that's what I was wondering. Okay, so it, it's just, it's isolated enough, so the way you can get to it is if somebody bad gets to it, or if just somebody just is not very human error. We'll go back to human error. What are the pros and cons of an air gap? So, pros of an air gap. Enhanced security, because you can't get to it. Um, well, it's harder to get to. Uh, data isolation. Uh, regulatory compliance okay so and then the cons of an air gap inconvenience so it can be it can be a challenge to transfer data between air gap systems and the outside world requiring manual methods so I can see that pain in the neck we'll call that instead limited functionality human error and maintenance costs so there you go let's see pretty understandable th this week so um, Let's just see, what is an example of a real life air gap incident? One notable example of a real life air gap incident is the Stuxnet worm, all right? I've heard of that one, but I don't fully understand it, but maybe we'll dive into that one in another episode. Stuxnet was a sophisticated malware discovered in 2010 that targeted Iran's nuclear program. It infected, oh, I've still got my air on, my heat on this whole time. You know what, we're just gonna live with it. I'm sorry about that. I'm used to it, it goes off all the time, I apologize. Let's get back into this. It infected air-gapped systems controlling uranium enrichment centrifuges. This incident demonstrated that even highly isolated systems could be compromised through the use of advanced malware, likely with the involvement of a nation state. Okay. All right, so there you go. That's an air gap. I think that was a pretty good success. So it's an isolated computer system that people can't get to unless, of course, they can physically get to it. And by the sounds of it, from 2010, you can get to them. So, all right, well, thanks again for joining me for another episode of Cybersecurity 101. Uh, join me again next week. Next Thursday is when we release our next episode. In the meantime, you can follow us on YouTube. The link is right here below me. 
and go in there please follow us like us share us hug us love us all the things that people do we'd appreciate it and don't forget you can follow us on social media on linkedin twitter and facebook so anyway all right until next week have a good one and we'll see you later